Hello everybody and welcome to another Twilight Zone review. Today it is Season 2, Episode 24, The Rip Van Winkle Caper, written by Rod Serling and starring Oscar Beregi as Farwell and Simon Oakland as De Cruz. And we get, yes, yet another time-traveling episode. But this time, they travel in time deliberately. So that's an interesting twist. And this is a really entertaining and good episode. So we start with four men. Um, they are actually criminals who unload a truck. And we find out as things go, they seem very happy because they just robbed a train with a lot of gold in it. And our two main men of the four are Farwell and De Cruz. And they... Um, kind of go back and forth while explaining the plan. They are in some type of cave, it looks like, up like above a cliff, probably a good hiding place. And Farwell explains, he's like the brains of the group, that they are going to be in suspended animation for approximately a 100 years, just like Rip Van Winkle. And that when they come out of it, they will be rich. Now, this plan does seem to have some advantages. Um, they don't explain them, but I would think that nobody would be after them after a hundred years or know anything about their plan. So I, I think it's, you know, good on that level. Unfortunately, there's some things they don't count on or think about, which is why I really like the episode. So we go to the next scene after the narration, and they're preparing to go into suspended animation. And Farwell explains what's going to happen to each man and calls out their names, and they're all there. So, um... It appears to work. They do go into suspended animation. And when they come out of it, um, they're not really sure if it worked or not. De Cruz thinks it didn't work. And Farwell says, you know, it must have worked. And De Cruz says, well, how come we don't have beards or anything? And Farwell says, you wouldn't because you were in suspended animation. Well, his proof comes when they realize there's only three of them there. De Cruz, Farwell, and the other one's name is Brooks, I believe. They're wondering what happened to the fourth man. Well, it turns out that they go back to his little enclosure thing and a rock hit the top of his glass case so he is now just a skeleton so this proves that they did travel forward in time and now there's only three of them as the fourth man didn't make it so they're checking things out you know to see you know what to do next and what's going on and they're discussing it and you can tell at this point that Farwell is interested in like the big picture, you know, like what could the world be like, what's going on. He wants the gold, but he's also curious to see what else is out there. Whereas De Cruz is pretty much only focused on the gold. So this is a contrast between both men who have their greedy elements, but De Cruz doesn't see things as far ahead or plan ahead as well. So we now have the three men and um, the third man goes on ahead to do something, and um, De Cruz uh, doesn't really like him. They're arguing. He doesn't want him around, and he actually deliberately hits Brooks with the car and drives the car off a cliff while jumping out. So now they have no car, and they have to do things his way. Now, why he would rather walk than drive a car, I'm not sure. This isn't, uh, as I've said before, one of the smartest Twilight Zone characters we've ever had, but he sure is... is uh, one of the worst, that's for sure. Um, this guy's pretty bad without many redeeming qualities, to be honest. So now he goes back to Farwell and he says, we're going to do things my way. And Farwell says, well, I really don't have a choice. So they're both on foot carrying the gold. And it's pretty rough going. It appears to be very hot. They keep showing uh, the sun in the sky, which is a little over dramatic, But okay, I get the point. And um, Farwell's getting worse and worse. He doesn't seem to be holding up as well as De Cruz is. And, you know, he, he doesn't have any water. Somehow he, he forgot or ran out or something, his canteen. So De Cruz says, well, I can give you water, but you have to give me one of your gold bars, you know, for each, each drink of water we have. Boy, this guy just gets worse and worse. So Farwell doesn't really have a choice. So he accepts and does give, you know, a bar of gold for water. And this continues on multiple times. They show him keep giving the gold uh, to De Cruz for more and more water. Well, it turns out they do make it to the next day, and De Cruz says, you know, the price went up. Now it's two bars of gold. This this guy's really bad. Good acting by Simon Oakland, though, I, I do have to say. And um, finally, it's to the point where Farwell looks like he can't take it anymore. He, he falls to the ground. He says, okay, I'll give you the two bars of gold. And when De Cruz uh, turns to get his canteen, Farwell tricks him, which isn't that hard to do, but he tricks him and hits him over the head with the gold bars, getting rid of... Um, De Cruz, so now it's just Farwell on his own, and he's really out of it at this point. He starts kind of 
half laughing kind of hysterically. But he's on his own, and who knows if he's delusional or what's going on. But he looks still in bad shape. So we go to the next scene, and we see he's collapsed on the ground, and a man finds him. And he's talking about Farwell, I'll give you gold, just take me to town, you know, save me, and all this and that. But before anything else can happen, he, he doesn't make it. He passes away. The man checks on him, you know, and he's, he's gone. Farwell's gone. So we end with... And this is a great twist. I think an underrated Twilight Zone twist and one of my favorites. The man goes back to his vehicle and there's a woman there. And the man says, you know, this old guy must have been delusional. He tried to give me gold. And she says, you know, gold, that's not worth anything. But wasn't it worth something about 100 years ago before they learned how to manufacture it? So that whole plan, even if they would have made it to town, was worthless because... Gold isn't worth anything anymore in, in this version of the future. So, you know, they thought it was a great plan, especially Farwell, but what he failed to realize is that you can never, ever predict what's coming in the future. You might think you know what's going to happen, but you really can't predict it. And this is one of those classic Twilight Zones where the people who aren't really very good get their uh, just do, which I enjoyed. Um, I don't know if it's good that I enjoyed that, but I did. And this is a very entertaining episode, and it's rewatchable even after you know the twist. So I give this episode a 4 out of 5. This is a really good one, and maybe a bit under the radar. So 4 out of 5 for the Rip Van Winkle caper. And as always, I recommend checking it out, and thanks for watching.